All right, mates, welcome back. JL Scott Fishing and Eats. Everybody's doing well. We're going to talk winter baits. Best top three winter smallmouth bait, baits for the Upper Potomac that we've been using here for the last week. Get the Upper Potomac right behind me here. All right. Top three baits, mates. Top three baits. Obviously, the number one bait we're going to talk about first is going to be the jerk bait. Obvious selection, right? Obvious selection. Okay, why am I going with this jerk bait? Obviously, I like what's happening with the water right now, okay? Okay, we're still in about 41 degrees of water, but look at the water clarity here. It's not too bad, okay? And so what I want is I still get that sunlight. A lot of people sleep on this fact about jerk baits. So they focus on color, okay? Um, and not so much size. They should focus on size, obviously. But they should focus on really the sun, okay? And the reason why I say that about this bait is because we look at water clarity looking down, okay? We look at the water from our boat, from our kayak, from the water, um, looking down into um, the water column. That is not what the smallmouth see. And the only thing I can liken it to for you mates is when you're scuba diving or if you've watched scuba diving or if you've been in deep water and you've looked up and you see the sunlight coming into the water column, okay? It's a completely different prism looking up at the top of the water and the sun coming through than it is us looking down trying to determine clarity. Oftentimes we get it completely wrong, okay? Because the fish see something completely different than we do. So you want something. Um, transition lines in your custom jerk bait. You want, um, you know, colors that are going to reflect that silhouette. Okay, I'll do another full jerk bait video um, back at the house to really explain all this. But if this isn't working, which just worked up until we got to about five feet, okay, and the water started to shift, it's bone on the bottom, okay change of color right but if that starts to become ineffective this is when I transition to this bait okay very similar to the darters and the chub and everything that's in and the shiners that are in a lot of our river fisheries here okay but the noise change this has a louder knocker okay and it's a diver so I was able to get deeper okay I was able to get a couple feet deeper then with this noise, I'll go over hook selections of also things that you want in your custom jerk baits. You do not need to spend $25 on jerk baits anymore. Those days are over, okay? Over. Um, get high quality hooks, change, pick out the size you want anywhere from three and a half. I've got jerk baits now that I've changed out. The standard's about four, four and a quarter, really. One tens. You, you, you know the drill, right? But a lot of times in these river fisheries for smallies, okay, you want to go with a smaller size jerk bait, okay, in, in, in various different times of the year. And just change that to match the bait fish. The bait fish swimming around now are two and a half inches, three max, okay. Um, second bait, bait two, hot, been highly, highly effective, obviously is noise generation, Okay, noise in action, and that would be your square bill, but smaller square bills. And square bills that are actually mimicking the actual forage in your fishery. First off, I start off the basic. Noise, noise, noise. Very small square bill. It's got the same colors of a shiner, of a golden shiner. Okay, darter, chub, any of that stuff. Shad-like, depending on where I am. Closer to the D.C. area, there's some shad there. That would be highly effective down there. Highly effective in Rock Creek, where Rock Creek empties into the Upper Potomac in the D.C. area. Start with that. But, always take with you. Don't let people dismiss the fact that the crawl are still active in December and January, depending on what's happening in your river system. Remember, the river has had a high water event, which has stirred up all of the composition on the bottom of the river. That's where they live. So even though they're lethargic and slow, they're easy, easy meals for smallies right now. So go with a crankbait just like this. Look at that off the sun. Look at that glow. Perfect size, okay? Perfect coloration, matching what we got. Again, water clarity. Check the water out. Okay? 
tight, tight wobbles, okay? That's what you want. Tight, tight wobbles going on this time of year, okay? Nothing big, nothing, no wide wobble stuff. You want tight and you want noise. That's what you want, okay? Bait three, must have. Even if you're not comfortable with it, take it with you if you're out on the river in December, and that is the trusty jig, okay? Bigger size format, upgrade a little bit to a little heavier ounce so it's going to drop faster, especially in this current and this moving water here with the rising water that we experienced the last couple days. Pumpkin color, brown compar. I like to add hair jigs, okay? Add the hair to the jigs, okay? Reds, okay? That's your, that's your upper Potomac, okay? But I'm going to throw in a little bonus. If you're fishing the lower Potomac, if you're fishing the tidal Potomac for largemouth bass right now, that's the one you want right there. Chartreuse, black and blue trailer, black and blue jig, a little bit of red right there. This is the one you want. This will catch you fish on the upper Potomac, okay? But a lot less. This is a bass, largemouth bass, tidal bass fishery jig, okay? Coloration pattern that works in the wintertime. So that's just an added bonus if you're fishing down in the tidal. Now, bonus two. If I can't get those things to work, if I can't get any of that to work, first of all, I'm not touching anything finesse, okay? Hasn't worked for me for the last seven days, okay, on the river. Finesse isn't working with the water conditions the way they've been. I don't know if it's the water temp. I don't know if it's the, the rising water um, for finesse fishing. So tubes have been kind of a no-go here in this section. But what's been very, very effective is this right here. Lipless crankbait. Again, noise bites. Those finesse baits aren't making any noise. Okay? Okay? Noise. They want noise in these water, rising water and coming water um, declining. They want that noise. And the reason why they want that noise is just listen out here if you can hear it. Even though the water's coming down from where it was, this water is still crashing those rocks. All kinds of noise is going down in the fishery, okay? And so you need things to get their attention. Um, so you want all those things to work in your favor um, in terms of smallies. Two days ago, mates, you couldn't even see those rocks, okay? Those rocks, except for further out, weren't even visible here. None of these rocks were visible two days ago in this section. So that's how far we've come down here since Saturday and Sunday. Um, so you need to change up. You need to change up your baits. I'm throwing, um, you know, I'm throwing anywhere from 8-pound to 10-pound P-line. Um, that's the line I prefer. Um, I will throw fluoro and change out um, sometimes, depending on the situations, to mono. Um, I don't feel the need to throw braid um, this time of year, especially in these sections of the river. river. Today I'm throwing my um, spinning tackle Shimano Spirex 4000. Um, they're not coming off that thing, okay? And that's the other thing I want to I want to want to say this, and I'll cover it in the other video that people make the mistake. I want you guys to think about changing one thing in 2023. Change throwing your jerk baits to a spinning setup, not a bait caster, okay? Trust me. You're going to get far less bites on your jerk bait come off, shake off with your spinning tackle than you are on a bait caster, mates. And I know a lot of people want to play around with all their bait caster, and you do. You're going to have to change. You know, there's a lot going on. I think the, the, the mo probably the most important thing is your rod, okay? But you got some flexibility there with spinning tackle um, with going to a lighter rod length okay, then you do a bait caster, and that using that medium action rod, too many people are using the wrong rod for jerk bait, jerk bait fishing, okay, and that tit, it's just too heavy, and that's why they're um, coupled with the hooks that you have, the wrong hooks that you have on some standard uh, jerk baits, shake off, thin wire hooks sometimes, um, they shake off, wrong number size, um, hooks, the wrong size, shake off, they shake them off, especially smallmouth. Large mouth, a little different. I mean, they'll shake off, but smallies will shake it off. Small, smallies are violent, okay? Um, and so 
just something to think about. I'll cover that in a jerk bait specific video. Um, probably got a dozen jerk baits. I'll go over different styles, different colors. What, what I what I realize, what I learned this year out on the Upper Potomac and the Allegheny and the Monocacy about jerk bait fishing all year long. I have not put the jerk bait down. Okay, all year I fished it every single month of the year, and some months obviously massive amounts of success. Other months like June, July, you know, not nearly as much. Um, there are more other effective baits, but do not. Do not not go out without your jerk bait, um, and just have that thought process. Then, 2023, I'm going to take a jerk bait out, and I'm going to take it on spinning tackle for the first time, and see how that is significant. And I'll do another video for kayak anglers out there. If you are not getting hookups and catch rates with a jerk bait in a kayak, I'll break down exactly why why that is. Okay, as opposed to if you were on a bass boat. Because jerkbait fishing is highly, highly sensitive to science and mathematics and physics. And once you get that dialed in with your rod length, the right reel, sitting in a kayak, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Because you're throwing the jerkbait at an entirely different level, an entirely different uh, degree pattern parallel to the water column, okay? And how that bait hits. And everything, it changes dramatically from a kayak, okay? Um, and so we'll cover that in the video as well. I hope everybody is going to have a great, great holiday. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah to all those who celebrate. And make sure that you have a happy and safe New Year. Um, but get out there and catch some smallies here in December and January, mates. It is a great time to be on the river. I'm sitting literally in a foot and a half of water and loving it, man, right underneath the sun and just testing some baits out and watching what happens to those baits in the sunlight. And I'm going to turn this, I'll turn the phone, turn the camera over and you can see what I'm talking about, about that sun. Right? How that sun is impacting the baits this time of year. Remember, it's completely different this time of year than in the summertime and the spring okay the air is different the water is different the temperature of thermals underneath the water are different everything is different mates and all that comes into play that a lot of people have no idea or even consider and if they did it would make them a much better angler and that's what we're all about for 2023 sharing everything we can to make you a better angler if you got any ideas or any things you want to see covered or if you want to come out on the water and fish with me or fish with us here on the Upper Potomac, you know where to find me, JL Scott Fishing and Eats on Facebook, JL Scott Fishing on TikTok and Instagram as well as here on YouTube. All right, mates, happy holidays.